Heidi here. So today's video is not a haul and it's not what's sold. And yes, I'm going to actually make a presentation style of video. But um, as you can see from the screen, we're going to talk about eBay shipping for Poshmark sellers. Poshmark makes it pretty darn easy to do the shipping on their site. Once in a while you might get stung by having a package that's more than five pounds, but even then, they just have you pony up a little more money and buy a heavier pound label. So that's okay. But uh, I've had, um, over the years, I've had a lot of people talk to me about eBay shipping and how it's preventing them from starting on eBay or they're on eBay, but they keep um, feeling like they're making mistakes or they're anxious every time they sell something. And I have some ideas about how you can set up your shipping on eBay and relieve your anxiety. And um, then over time, you can make adjustments or change things if you think, well, Heidi's method is stupid. I'm gonna try something else. You'll know enough to do that. But, so this is just to get you started. And this first lesson, um, I think there might be two, maybe three. Depends on if I get any questions on this topic. But, um, so let's talk about um, who this video series is for. It's for Poshmark sellers who want to try eBay, but they've heard that shipping is hard or confusing or difficult or expensive. Um, it's also for sellers who have started, um, who started on Poshmark and then have tried eBay, but they feel confused or they consistently have problems with shipping, whether that's um, a package that was the wrong weight or they the buyer paid this much money and you had to pay a lot more money. Um, so people who are trying it but just feel like they don't have a handle. And then um, maybe newish eBay sellers who are confused by eBay shipping a little bit. Maybe you've never sold on Poshmark. You're just getting started on eBay and the shipping is a challenge for you. So I have a, a method to propose to you that is simple and won't cost you any money and you might even make money. So. Um, I hope if that sounds intriguing to you, stay tuned. But this first video is going to be um, some things you need to know first. So uh, conversely, this video is not for certain people. If you're an experienced eBay seller and you have no problems with eBay shipping, um, you're going to be bored or you're going to disagree with everything I say. Your system or your method for shipping was developed with your research and experimentation and considering your tolerance for risk and what makes you happy. Everybody makes their decisions in their business based on avoiding pain and making themselves happy. So my method is probably not yours. So if you're experienced, you might just wanna move along and come back for the next video. So some things I want you to keep in mind as we're getting started. There are many ways to set up your shipping as many ways as you could list an item, you could have a different shipping method almost. eBay was built for sellers who are selling from one item out of their garage to millions of items. And the platform has to be able to accommodate all these different kinds of sellers, volume sellers or one-off sellers. And they've got options to fit just about anybody's desire for shipping. After you get started, you can experiment and change things later. Once you understand what's going on, then if you do an experiment, you'll be less likely to make a mistake that costs money or upsets you. There's no one right way that works for everybody. The way I suggest will work for new sellers and you won't lose money. It's that simple. If you wanna try something then later, you can do that. But to get started, I'm gonna suggest a method that will work for every package you ship. I'm talking primarily to used clothing sellers, but you can sell anything with this method if you follow my rules and you won't lose money on shipping. So there's no guarantee how things will go if you sorta of kinda do it the way I suggest, but you fudge a little and you cut a corner or you just tweak one thing and, well, yeah, she said it this, but I'm actually gonna do that. Um, don't mess around with this method until you understand what you're changing, okay? Do we have a deal? Um, years ago, I used to teach 
people how to run elections. And we had a lot of step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step protocols that had to be followed. But each jurisdiction could have slightly different step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step protocols as long as they got the perfect result at the end. But anytime you change something, you had to understand what the purpose of it was before you changed it so that it didn't get a, an outcome that you didn't like. eBay shipping is like that. So if you're gonna try my method, try my method. Don't cut corners or fudge or change one little thing because then, you know, nothing bad will happen. We're not doing neurosurgery here. We're just selling used clothes on the internet and shipping them in little packages across the country. So even if something bad happens to someone, it won't be bad, you understand? So don't be afraid. People talk about horror stories on eBay. No, they don't understand what a horror story is. If it's that you um, sold a package and charged $7 for shipping and it cost you 11 to ship, that $4 is not a horror story, okay? So don't be afraid. Follow my method. Change things later if you want to. I have a rule. You have to have a scale, okay? And you have to weigh your items when I tell you to, okay? If you're not willing to do that, then keep looking on YouTube and find another shipping method for Poshmark sellers looking to sell on eBay. You have to have a scale. You're not good at estimating what things weigh. Maybe if you work nine to five at the deli counter weighing smoked turkey all day, you are good at estimating. But you can't just estimate on eBay. You have to know. So stop right here. Get on Amazon. Order a postal scale. Spend about 20 to $25. Get one where you can see the readout when the item is um, covering up everything, right? So a separate readout and um, get that on your way to you today. We'll talk about scales more, but if you want to be a star pupil and get ahead of the game, order your scale. Um, for this uh, method, we're going to be only using USPS shipping services, not FedEx, not UPS, even though they're great, they're grand. For this method, we're going to only use USPS, and we are only going to be purchasing labels on eBay, from eBay. It's actually from Pitney Bowes, but you get the idea. We're not going to be using Pirate Shipped or any of the other um, third-party platforms that sell postage. They're great. I use them sometimes, but for this method, only purchasing labels from eBay. Okay? Those are my rules. So um, let's learn some new vocabulary. None of these look like new vocabulary words, but um, I want to talk about what they mean in relationship to your eBay selling. eBay has something called business policies, and we'll talk about what the different types of business policies are, but they're decisions that you make about your business and how you sell. The most important of these business policies is shipping policies. And so we're going to be talking about what shipping policies you're going to establish and then use over and over and over again each time you list. It's like this policy applies to this kind of package or this kind of item. So a policy is a decision that you make in advance of how you're going to do something in a certain situation. A shipping service. So this is um, again, we're only using USPS, so USPS has a variety of shipping services. For example, Ground Advantage or Priority Mail or Media Mail, those are services, shipping services. Handling time, that's how quickly you're going to get the order into the mail stream. Not how quickly you'll put it in a package, not how quickly you'll put a label on it, but how quickly you'll get it into the mail stream. It's been received by USPS and scanned. That is your handling time. Flat rate shipping. So the Postal Service has a service they call Priority Mail, and within that they have some packages that you can get, envelopes or boxes, and they have what they call, if it fits, it ships. They charge a flat rate for shipping an item in that package flat rate. That's not what I'm talking about right now. eBay uses the word flat rate shipping to say you're going to charge this much to anyone who buys your package, no matter where they live. So if they live in California, 
$5.99. If they live in the next town over from you, $5.99. A flat rate to ship the package, okay? Calculated shipping. Calculated is for each combination of you and a buyer and a package, eBay will calculate the shipping charge. So that's another method of how you're charging the buyer. And then there are retail rates and commercial rates from USPS. There are also other rates that we don't know anything about. For example, the rates that Poshmark negotiated with the USPS, or even the rates that eBay negotiated with USPS. But if you have a commercial account, and we do as eBay sellers, you pay a cheaper rate to ship most packages than if you go to the USPS store or your post office and slap a package on the counter to Aunt Millie, they're gonna charge you a retail rate. But when we buy labels from eBay, we pay a commercial rate, which is lower. So those are some new vocabulary words that I'll be throwing around. We talked about business policies that eBay offers you as a tool to use. And it's interesting, even if you choose not to use business policies, they have something they call opting in. Even if you choose not to use them, every decision you make on every listing creates a business policy in the background because eBay needs them to function. So even though you might think you don't have any business policies or shipping policies, you do. eBay just created them for you each time you made a listing with a unique set of decisions. The three business policies types are your payment policy. The vast majority of us are gonna say, I require immediate payment. But you can allow buyers to take longer to pay. And yes, I know that I can make another video about requiring immediate payment, and then you accept an offer and the buyer doesn't pay for four days. Yeah, that's going away, but it hasn't gone away yet. Immediate payment here refers to if you list something for $25 and the buyer clicks on it and pays full price, it's, eBay's going to require them to, to pay immediately. They can't get it out of their shopping cart otherwise. So the item is not sold until it's paid for. That's immediate payment, but it doesn't apply to offers. So your payment policy, you don't have a lot of choices to make unless you choose, like in the olden days, to give people up to two weeks to pay. Yep, that used to be, it was very common back in the way back in the day of money orders and auctions. Another type of business policy is your return policy. And you can create multiple return policies and apply them to different items. I have sold some items that I won't accept a return. You just take it as is. It might be, maybe it's a broken electronic that's good for parts. You just sell it as is, no returns. You might have a return policy where the, you'll accept returns, but the buyer pays shipping. That's one return policy. You might have a return policy where you accept returns and you'll pay the shipping. Those are called free returns. And you can choose different policies for different listings. But we're not gonna be talking about those in depth in this series either. Shipping policy is the third type, and that's where uh, people get hung up. So. You can have multiple policies of any type, but if you have too many, meaning, I don't know, six different return policies, they're not good policies. Figure out what you want, what's important to you. And yes, you might have um, buyer pays returns on 99% of your items and no return on a couple. That's fine, those are good policies. And again, with shipping policies, if you're creating something new for every single listing, oh, this is expensive, so I think I'll have it be cheaper. Or, oh, this is cheap, so I better charge more. Or, oh, everybody else seems to be doing free shipping on this item, so I'll do free shipping on this item. Suddenly, you've created all these different policies, and you've lost sight of what your real policy is. So you can have multiple types, multiple policies in each type, but if you have too many, they might not be thoughtful well-designed policies to begin with. So again, business policies are a set of decisions that you make in advance 
when you're really thinking about what's important to you, to suit specific situations, and you use them over and over. And the way you use them over and over, once you've created them and you're in a listing, eBay no longer shows you all the decisions every single time for every listing the way it does without business policies. It shows you little drop downs. Oh, which payment policy do you want to use? Which return policy do you want to use? And which shipping policy do you want to use for this item? So you don't have to make all those decisions over and over again. They're already made and you choose which one. However, they're not guidelines. They're decisions. If you're constantly editing a policy, let's say you're listing a particular jacket and you're asking a lot of money for it and you're putting in, boy, the policy that would fit this item, its weight and the size of the box, you would normally charge $12.99 to ship this. Boy, this is so expensive. Maybe you'll just charge like $6. Well, first of all, my thought is if somebody's paying a couple hundred for a coat, they're not going to worry about 12 bucks for shipping. But don't let individual items emotionally sway you. A shirt is a shirt is a shirt is a shirt. It weighs eight ounces. It weighs eight ounces. No matter what it is or what it costs, this is what we charge to ship. So those those policies are decisions you make. And if you're editing a policy, ask yourself, why? Is this a decision that I'm going to use again? Or is it a really unique situation? So shipping policies, that's what we're really here about. A shipping policy has three parts or three decisions that you make to create it. How you're going to charge the buyer. Are you going to not charge the buyer at all and offer free shipping? I did um, talk to somebody very early on in my reselling career who seemed confused about free shipping. They couldn't find the place where you signed up for it because they thought free shipping would be great as a seller. And then they thought nobody had to pay for free shipping. Somebody always pays. If it's free shipping, it means you as the seller are paying. Okay, just so we're clear on that. There's no free lunch and there's no free shipping. But if you don't charge the buyer, that's called free shipping. If you're going to charge the buyer um, a flat amount of money, the same amount of money, no matter what, uh, where the buyer lives in the country, how far away from you they are, this eight ounce shirt is always going to cost $5.99 to ship no matter where the buyer is. That's a flat rate. And the third way you can charge the buyer is calculated. We'll get into more detail about that later because calculated shipping is going to become your friend. Calculated means for each group, each meetup of a seller and a buyer in a package, we'll calculate the shipping for that unique circumstance. And eBay magically does that in the background and tells the buyer what it will be. The second part of a shipping policy is what shipping service is available that you're going to offer the buyer. You might just offer them one shipping service, um, ground advantage. You might offer them um, only priority. You might offer them only media mail if it's a book or a movie or a, a music CD. Not magazines. Anything with advertising cannot have cannot go media mail. But um, what shipping service is available? And again, once you get past Heidi's rules, you could offer USPS one way, and then UPS. Maybe some buyers would prefer UPS because it comes to they come to their office every day, and that would be great. But we're only doing USPS right now. So the three most common shipping services from USPS that you're going to be using in your eBay store are Ground Advantage, Priority, and Media Mail. A third part of your shipping policy is how fast you'll ship. The number of days of handling time. Again, how quickly you're going to get it in the mail stream. We'll talk a little bit more about how to choose your handling time. So shipping service again could be Ground Advantage, could be USPS Priority, could be Media Mail, could be inter eBay International Shipping, Ooh. could be FedEx, could be UPS. That's a shipping service. Handling time. How fast you promise to ship paid orders. It's not um, f kind of gray area the way it is on Poshmark. Poshmark would like you to ship right away. And they say, yeah, they'll start to nag you after three days. 
And after seven days, boy, things really get uncomfortable. But anywhere in there, I know many people who ship twice a week on Poshmark, and that's it. And they're fine. But on eBay, you decide, and you better do it. So if your days are kind of, um, they change from day to day, and you can't commit to doing it every day, then you might want to choose two days or three days. And you know you can do it every other day, okay? But once you decide, you're committed to it until you change all your listings to be a different handling time. <coughs> eBay calculates using calendar days, so the 22nd, the 23rd, the 24th, but those days start at midnight Pacific time, not your time zone, because eBay is in California. So my day doesn't end. Today is the 19th of July. It won't be the 20th of July in my eBay store until 3 a.m. tomorrow because I'm in the Eastern time zone, okay? So don't forget that. When I go to bed, I might think I have nothing to ship tomorrow. But when I wake up, if I got something before midnight in California, I have to ship it tomorrow, okay? If you get an order at 2 a.m. Eastern time, you have to ship the same day because according to eBay, that came in yesterday. They do exclude Saturday, Sunday, and all USPS holidays. Those are not count as days for your shipping or handling time. If you, when you're choosing how many days your policy is going to have for shipping, eBay um, warns you that more than three days is uncommon or unusual or excessive. Depending on where I was looking, I found different wording. So they could punish you kind of subtly by showing the um, items from fast shippers um, higher up in the search results than slow shippers. And I really believe it happens. My listings say right on them, when the buyer clicks on my listing, ships in one day, uh, top rated seller, very reliable, gets great feedback. They put all these wonderful little comments in that talk about me as a seller. And those things would be missing if you don't ship in one day. It would tell the buyer when they could expect to receive the item, but it, it will tack on two or three days to the shipping time. So if you can ship every day, great. So flat rate shipping and calculated shipping. Some of these things I'm repeating myself, but I want to be sure you understand the distinction. Flat rate means the buyer plays a flat amount you specify no matter where they live for that item in the listing. Don't confuse USPS priority flat rate packages or if it fits it ships when we're talking about flat rate shipping on your eBay policy. You could choose a priority mail padded flat rate package to ship the item in, but it'll just look like priority to the buyer or expedited. They don't care that you're using a flat rate package, okay? Calculated means the buyer pays for shipping based on where they are compared to where you are and how much this item weighs with its packaging material. Your zip code to their zip code equals a zone. So from me in Michigan to someone in California, that's zone eight, and that is one of the most expensive packages. To me, to another buyer in my same town is zone one, and that is the least expensive package for that weight. So a zone is not a geography, it is a zip code pair. Flat rate shipping and calculated shipping. So a little more information about that. You might have never noticed this when you're shopping on eBay, but this is what happens. When a buyer clicks on your listing, not just sees it in the search result, but clicks through to the listing, eBay will display the shipping charge. If, they, if you had chosen flat rate ground advantage, it would show the dollar amount that you chose, for example, $5.99, and then it would say standard shipping. Flat rate priority, and again, not flat rate packages, but a flat charge priority, would show the dollar amount, maybe $9.99, and then it would say expedited shipping. It will be calculated for either service. It would use your zip code and theirs to calculate the correct retail rate for that buyer. It will show the buyer the retail charge. Remember I told you 
we pay commercial charges. It'll show the buyer the retail rate. Both of these choices would show a range of estimated delivery dates. For example, today's the 19th, a ground advantage package, it might say, it'll arrive between July 24th and 27th. Or for a priority package to my next town over, it might say it'll arrive between July 21st and 23rd. It'll give them an estimated delivery date based on how fast you ship and how long USPS will take. When you look at your own listings on a calculated shipping item, you are seeing what it would cost to ship to someone in your zip code because you're looking at it and you, it's your zip code that they're using. Does that make sense? If I called one of my friends in North Carolina or Massachusetts and said, could you look at my listing on a calculated, they would see what it would cost to ship from where they are. Okay. Retail rates versus commercial rates. And again, we talked about this already, but I'm going to go into a little more detail. On standard calculated shipping, whether ground advantage or priority or media mail, the buyer is charged the retail rate and the seller or you, when you're buying the postage or label for the order, you are charged the commercial rate. You can keep the difference. So if I use calculated ground on an eight ounce package, Let's say it costs me $4.32, but the buyer was charged $5.62. So eBay collects from the buyer $5.62, they pay to me $5.62, and I pay back to eBay $4.38, or whatever I said, for the label. So I could make a little bit of uh, money on each shipping package. You can choose for every order to let eBay charge the buyer the commercial rate. This is called passing on your shipping discount. I'm sorry, my head is in the way now. Once you opt in to share your discount, it applies to all sales. It applies to all your sales using calculated shipping. And to my knowledge, buyers are not told they're getting a discount. They would just see a cheaper calculated shipping charge. And I know that this is very important to some sellers. They, want, they don't want any part of making a profit on shipping. Uh, to me, shipping is a product, is a, another service that I sell. I'll sell you the shirt and I will sell you the shipping. And if I make a little bit of money on the shipping, I consider that that um, helps offset my costs of uh, carefully packaging it and carefully folding it and wrapping it up, the labels that I buy, etc. It's not much. But if you want to, share your discount with your buyers. You can opt in, but then it's all your sales. You can't opt in on each item, okay? So it's called passing on your shipping discount. You can opt in and then all your listings, they pay commercial rates. If you opt out, then it goes back to being retail and you can change your mind, okay? So that's something you could read more about. So, the Postal Service has a magic document called Notice 123. And um, up until a couple weeks ago, there were two of them out, the currently effective one and the proposed one. But then their changes were approved by the Postal Commission and went into effect on July 9th, which is when um, first class package and uh, parcel select services went away and they were combined into a new service called Ground Advantage. And all of that uh, was reflected in Notice 123. Notice 123 lists, I think it's like 57 pages. It lists all the prices for everything, every weight, everywhere, retail and commercial. There's a lot of stuff in there. So I am going to share with you which pages I would like you to find and print out. And I think I need to pause here a moment and go find those pages. No, I know right where they are. Hold on. Because I keep them handy. So, um, pages five and seven. Oh, good grief, Heidi. Pages five and seven, I priority retail and commercial. And pages 11 and 15 are ground advantage, retail and commercial rates. 
So you can look at those charts. They look like this. This one was the draft version, but it's effective now. And see how much any size package would cost the buyer as retail or the seller as commercial, that's you, any weight package anywhere in the country. And I would like you to, um, before we do lesson two, find notice one, two, three, and save or print out those pages, five, seven, 11, and 15. You can save the whole document if you want. I'm gonna put a link in the description box to this uh, PDF of notice one, two, three. But if you prefer, you can Google USPS Postal Explorer rates. And then when you get a link there, somewhere on that landing page will be notice123.pdf document. And you can um, download it, you can read it, you can save those pages, five, seven, 11, and 15, because we're gonna use them in the future to help you decide how you're gonna do your shipping on eBay. So before the next lesson, think about, do I want to do a flat charge on my packages or do I want to do calculated? And I'll confess for brand new people, I'm going to recommend you do calculated because then once you get the weight right, you never have to worry if you're charging the right amount. How fast are you going to ship? One day, two day, three day? Longer than that is excessive, unusual, or whatever. But I think you can go all the way up to 10 days. If you're going to do calculated shipping, are you going to share your discount, or are you going to collect that little bit of difference? And by looking at those pages, you can see what the difference is. The heavier it is, the bigger the discount. And you have to decide when you're going to order your scale if you didn't already pause the video and go do that. Um, I can link the scale that I've been using for five years. It's Accutech. I think it paid around $20, but um, it doesn't have to be that one. Uh, I don't recommend, I'm going to say I don't recommend you get a battery operated scale. Yours might have to be battery operated, but then you're going to definitely want to get a rechargeable one or um, use rechargeable batteries because nothing worse than having your scale be um, dark and quiet and you can't do your shipping because you can't weigh a package. So. I know they have rechargeable ones uh, that come with like a, a lithium battery that's rechargeable or you can get your own batteries. I have mine on my desk so it's plugged in all the time, but you might have yours by your photography station so it needs to be portable. But that's what you have to decide. Are you going to, when are you going to order your scale and which one are you going to get? So my motto is shipping begins when you list, not when you sell. All the decisions should be made when you list, and then shipping day is no big deal. All you have to do is find it. Oh, yes, I have a great inventory system too. No, I'm sure your inventory system is awesome. So all you have to do is find it, slip it in a poly mail or slap a label on it, and off you go. Shipping, it begins when you list, not when you sell. And I think I have one more thing to say. Yeah, you must have a scale. You must know what packaging you're going to use when you list the item. If you're just guessing, that's where everyone's anxiety comes from. That's where all the horror stories come from, is guessing how you're going to ship it. Should you list a, well, I just got a, a Cricut cake. It cuts fondant for cakes. My uh, granddaughter asked me to sell it for her. It weighs about 13 pounds. Should I list that before I have a box to put it in? No, I should not. Should I list it guessing what it weighs? No, I should not. I should measure it, weigh it, and find a box for it before I list it. Then when it sells, I'm not in a panic. I can just slap a label on it and off it goes. So you must know what packaging you're gonna use when you list an item and you must have a scale. So listing two is going to be how to create a shipping policy using your web browser eBay lets you list from the app and choose shipping policies from the app, but you can't create shipping policies from the app. So I'm going to show you how to do it using a web browser. I think that's all I have to say. Food for thought. You can do this 
and it's easy. And uh, please leave your questions down below or um, message me on Instagram and I'll make sure that they get answered either in the comments or in my next video. Thanks kids. Um, believe it or not, I had fun. This sort of stuff is right up my alley. I hope it wasn't boring. I don't think I said anything remotely funny. Sorry. Get a scale. Bye kids.